All right, so along with the new 9th gen CPUs from Intel, outroll a stack of updated motherboard options in the form of the Z390 chipset. Now, if you have decided that you are going with that 600 US dollar 9900K, generally going with a Z390 motherboard is the most sort of straightforward option. And they do have a more updated, stronger VRM generally compared to Z370. But more importantly, and this is the main reason why they exist, they come out of the box with a fresh BIOS update so that you know that that 9th gen CPU is supported. Now seeing as this is our very first look at Z390 motherboards on the channel, I want to take a very brief look at the spec upgrades over Z370, and yeah, they're really brief. Basically, we have native support for USB 3.1 Gen 2 ports now, whereas on Z370, motherboard manufacturers had to use external controllers, and we also have native support for 802.11ac Wi-Fi. And that is it. I mean, there's not a massive difference between Z370 and Z390 on paper, apart from those couple different specs, which to be honest, on Z370, we had USB 3.1 Gen 2 already, and most Z370 boards also had uh, 802.11ac Wi-Fi. They just required separate controllers on the board. So what's the big difference with Z390? Well, you're getting 9th gen CPU support out of the box. Whereas if you do buy a Z370 motherboard along with the 9th gen CPU, you will have to make sure that the BIOS is updated, which requires another external CPU. So possibly from your friend or a computer store. We'll talk more about that later. Or you could update it via BIOS flashback uh, via a USB. They are cross compatible too. So for example, you can use an 8700K on a Z390 board and you can use a 9900K on a Z370 board. Another upgrade for Z390 is that generally, and this is going to depend on board to board, the vCore VRM has been updated with a higher phase count or just total MOSFET count to better dissipate the heat increase and total power output. This is of course to handle the new eight core CPUs like the 9700K, but more specifically the 9900K, as that CPU will definitely require a lot more power, especially if you're planning to overclock across all eight cores. So today we're briefly going to be looking at these two new Z390 motherboards from MSI, the MEG Ace and the MPG Edge. And I say briefly because I don't actually have a 9900K to do any worthy testing on these boards, which definitely sucks. Ideally, we'd be looking at power consumption, overclocking, and what the auto voltage looks like with the i9, but I feel like those numbers are really only relevant for that 9900K. So I've reserved my testing here to just VRM thermals with an overclocked 8700K, but that should give us a good reference point. We will cover what is relevant here though, and do stay until the end where we'll discuss this launch as a whole, whether you should upgrade, and if you do decide to upgrade, whether Z370 or Z390 is the way to go. Okay, let's start with the board that most people are interested in here, the MEG Z390 Ace. This is one of MSI's top tier boards, which is one step below that flagship Z390 Godlike, which is absolutely overkill for the majority of users unless you're planning on breaking records with liquid nitrogen. Still though, it comes in at a very premium price of just under 290 US dollars over at Amazon. So the Z390 Ace is positioned as a board for those who are planning on using the 9900K of course, and then allowing plenty of headroom for overclocking that chip on a liquid cooler or a large air cooler. One thing I've noticed is MSI's branding refresh here, which aesthetically is quite nice with an overall neutral design and RGB illumination, which is reserved for just the IO shroud. I appreciate that they're doing things differently here compared to just the diffused RGB elements positioned randomly on their previous boards. Here they've got an infinity mirror with RGB lighting, which looks pretty cool. Certainly not a reason to upgrade alone though, but it's nice to see a few changes other than that native USB 3.1 Gen 2. The RGB shroud is covering a decent portion of that VRM heatsink though, which does prevent heat dissipation on that particular area. The heatsink is also kind of void of any true heatsink design, although that seems to be the trend these days. My feelings here are that if you truly want to convince people to upgrade because of a superior VRM, the VRM heatsink is a great place to start. This is in contrast to the VRM heatsink on the $100 cheaper Z390 Edge, which has nothing covering it at all, and at least has somewhat of a thin array to increase surface area and improve heat dissipation. Still though, it's nothing compared to what we've seen on the AMD X470 boards, which also support up to eight core CPUs. 
Okay, now let's take a look at the VRM and see if it really is worth that upgrade over Z370. So starting with the Z390 Ace, the VRM here is 13 phases in total, configured as 12 plus one. The PWM phases are controlled via the IR35201, which is a very popular eight phase controller in enthusiast boards, also used in Z370. And here it's outputting six plus one PWM phases. Here's six phases are used for the CPU V core, which are doubled by IR3598 on the back of the board. And that plus one phase might seem a bit weak for the iGPU, seeing as we usually get about two here, but here it's minimized to just one, mostly for the CPU system agent and the IO, seeing as the iGPU has no display outputs at all on this board. That's a bit of a shame to be honest, seeing as I find the iGPU pretty useful when I need to troubleshoot boot errors and any problems with my discrete GPU. Not really a deal breaker though, especially the target audience for this board. At this price point, I really would have liked to see integrated power stages like the IR3556, as this is almost a $300 board, and instead we're getting on semiconductor 4C024Ns for the low side MOSFETs and 4C0249s for the high side. The aforementioned integrated power stages or similar can be found easily on existing Z370 boards on the market, for a bit cheaper also. MSI can get away with using these less efficient, cheaper FETs though, because again, there are 12 phases for the V-Core VRM to spread that power and heat. Still though, at this price point, I really would have liked to see a more efficient integrated solution. And the reason for my main gripe here is because these MOSFETs are the same ones that are used on the $100 cheaper board that we're going to look at right now. The Z390 Edge aims to be a more mainstream offering, so it will be interesting to see if we're getting a decent VRM here. And of course, given the price of around $190 US dollars, it's definitely going to be a more popular option than the Ace in my opinion. Now, the VRM here is an eight plus two phase using the same on semiconductor MOSFETs that we just looked at. And the PWM controller is the UP9521P. That's outputting four plus two PWM phases and the four phases for the V-Core are doubled to produce eight in total. Overall, I think this is pretty acceptable for the price, but again, integrated power stages would have been nice here as well. Now, although I don't have that 9900K to complete all of the testing that I would have liked here, I still tested VRM temperatures with my 8700K to serve at least as a bit of a reference point. In summary, the Ace handled things pretty well since we're spreading that heat over 12 phases, and the Edge also did good, but if you're overclocking a 9900K on that board, I'd highly recommend sufficient airflow around the VRM, as there you will likely approach 100 degrees C with that CPU at full blast. So overall, I think these are pretty good boards and ultimately I'd need to test more Z390 and Z370 boards out there to see how they stack up. The MSI Z390 Edge competes right against MSI's own Z370 Gaming M5, which looks a lot better in my opinion and also has a convenient clear CMOS at the rear IO. Whereas the Z390 Ace appropriately fills that gap between the Gaming M5 and their godlike. Whether these boards are suitable for you though really depends on the context. For example, gaming loads will be fine with a 9900K on both boards, but for something like streaming, I would definitely steer you in the direction of the Z390 Ace. And so Z390 as a whole is okay. It's good that it exists of course, because people with ninth generation CPUs can then uh, get a supportive motherboard out of the box and they don't have to worry about BIOS compatibility issues or anything like that. Just be aware that there seems to be a bit of a Z390 tax between the Z390 motherboards and their respective Z370 motherboards, which honestly have fairly comparable VRMs. Now actually going with a decent Z370 motherboard would be my first personal preference if I was going with the i9-9900K. That way you can save about $50 to $100 and offset that insane price of that processor in the first place. Getting the motherboard updated is gonna be the biggest issue though. And there you have two options. The first option is to install an eighth gen CPU uh, into the motherboard and update the BIOS that way. This could be your old CPU, your friend's CPU, a family member, or you could even take it to a computer shop. They will likely be able to help you out with a small fee. The second option is to update the BIOS with a BIOS flashback functionality, but you have to make sure that your motherboard has that feature. So make sure you check that before buying. 
Before you click add to cart though, a bit of food for thought because there are better chipset and CPU options for the majority of you watching this. The first thing that you need to consider before upgrading is that as far as we know, and by looking at Intel's previous chipset and CPU support, Z390 is a complete dead end in terms of future supported CPUs. That is, if you do go with a Z390 motherboard and a 9900K, your next CPU upgrade will require a fresh motherboard purchase, which will set you back between $200 and $300 at this level. This is compared to AMD's entire AM4 platform, which most of you know has a very decent upgrade path claimed until 2020. The second problem is of course the price of the 9900K, which currently sits at 579 US dollars or an insane 859 Australian. This makes it $300 more expensive than the Ryzen 7 2700, which is also an eight core 16 thread CPU. And for some perspective, you could pick up the R7 2700 with an enthusiast level X470 motherboard and you'd still be below the price of the 9900K alone. I feel like the 8700K and the Ryzen 7 2700 already satisfy a majority of the market. Those who are going to be gaming or maybe doing a bit of streaming, if value is a priority for your system, then I would first point you in the direction of Z370 and X470. However, if you do insist on upgrading to one of those new ninth generation CPUs and a Z390 motherboard, these certainly seem like good boards uh, to take a look at. Certainly, I would need a 9900K to validate my recommendations to you guys. So again, I apologize for not having that CPU and performing that testing here. Otherwise, guys, a huge thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts down below on the ninth generation CPUs and the Z390 platform. In my opinion, this just makes the Ryzen series a much more compelling option for consumers. And even Intel's own i7-8700K looks like a bargain when compared to the 9900K, in my opinion. So as always, thanks for watching. Subscribe down below if you haven't already, and I'll see you all in the next one.